Hi guys, my name is Elsie. My name is JT. And welcome to F1 Decoded episode 3. In this episode we're going to be battling the two Finnish world champions of Mika Hakkinen and Kimi Raikkonen. I'm going to be discussing Kimi and JT is going to be discussing Mika. So let's start off with Kimi Raikkonen, the current driver on the grid with Ferrari. He started his career uh, with Sauber in 2001. His first entry was the 2001 Australian Grand Prix, uh, building experience with the new uh, with with the, uh, a new driver, a Swiss team. Uh, really moving forward and getting experience for like that to move up to a bigger junior team. In 2002, he moved to McLaren. Now this was really good for him because this was Mick's team. This is where Mick had dominated and won his two world championships. So it was a real uh, buzz for Kimi to move to this team. Uh, his first win was the 2003 Malaysian Grand Prix, a year after he joined McLaren. Uh, was very much in the team and yeah, growing as a, as an actual driver. Now he stayed with McLaren for four years uh, until 2006. Um, as I say, doing really really well. Uh, his first re- uh, win came in 2003, and he was really growing from then. Then he moved to Ferrari in 2007. Now Ferrari, since Michael Schumacher's domination, obviously through the early 2000s after Mika Hakkinen. Uh, and then two year gap with Fernando Alonso. Ferrari wanted to be back on the top, and they were with Kimi Räikkönen. He dominated that year to become 2007 world champion with Ferrari. An amazing driver, a very fast driver. Uh, you know, dominated in terms of fastest laps, uh, wins, and really put the pressure to everyone else. Obviously, he had he had some great rivals, uh, Fernando Alonso, and a very 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 young uh, with McLaren uh, driver called Lewis Hamilton. So that was uh, really good from him. Uh, he made uh, he uh, spent another two years after 2007 with Ferrari, where the car was not really on top. Obviously, McLaren won 2008 with Lewis Hamilton and Braun in 2009 with Jensen Button. So Ferrari weren't really at the top then. And 2009 was a year that Kimi was really he wasn't happy with the car. They weren't performing as well, and especially not to the extent of when he was in 2007, world champion, uh, dominating races. So he left in 2009 to go to Rally. Now, he had a successful Formula uh, Rally career until the end of 2011. Um, he, was a, he was nicknamed the Iceman, a very skillful driver, a very fun driver to watch. But he did make his comeback at the Formula 1 in 2012 with Lotus Renault, a partner in Romain Grosje on the French driver who had not been down career with Haas at the moment, but he was crashing left, right and centre, uh, a bit like Pastor Maldonado, if, if, if you like. Now, his comeback was, was promising, I would say, his first uh, win after his uh, after his comeback was the 2012 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. He was running in second place until Lewis Hamilton had an electrical problem and uh, retired out the race. Which, funnily enough, uh, GT actually made a bet on Lewis to win, and I was very yeah, upset when he crashed out. Um, so that was very promising. Now, obviously, Abu Dhabi was a great race for him, but I think um, you know, see, take out Brazil, the next race will be Australia in 13. Now, this is a race that was is probably one of my favourites of this modern era. Kimi Räikkönen, obviously a legend in Formula 1, he's been in there for a very long time, dominated in Australia uh, to win the race. Fantastic. That is That was his last win, uh, his most recent win, sorry, in Formula 1, the 2013 Australian Grand Prix, but it was incredibly uh, exciting. He then moved back to Ferrari in 2014, partnering Fernando Alonso in the V6 era, and then in 2015, uh, and this year, uh, Sebastian Vettel. Showing that he still has it. Now, 2015, sorry, 2014 and 2015 weren't really a year for Kimi to, to be anything excited about. But this year definitely has shown real potential. Um, absolutely shining in Bahrain and in Russia, especially in, in, the, in, the, um, in, in the harsh reality that obviously his teammate is having reliability problems and the team aren't again on, on on top on form as the Ferrari that they were I'd even say around 2011 2012 when Ferrari was still showing signs of we're going to come back we're, we're, we're coming back into the Michael Schumacher era that we'd just come out of uh, so there we go there's a little bit of a brief uh, intro of uh, Kimi's uh, life now I'll give you some of the, the stats the stat attacks uh, that Kimi pulls in Formula 1 his current team is Ferrari as I said uh, car number 7 as he, uh, when the drivers got to pick numbers uh, he uh, chose car number 7. He had 236 entries in Formula 1, making 235 starts. Uh, he's won championship in 2007. Uh, and within that, he got 20 wins, 82 podiums, 1,217 career points, 16 pole positions, 
42 fastest laps, which he holds. Uh, that is a record that no one, no one beats him in that. Um, and his 2015 position was fourth place. Now, that is, was, uh, that is quite strong. See, his predicament, Ferrari, the V6, wasn't strong. Uh, even in winter tests, and I think even on the first day of the first test, Kimi said that this car was an improvement over last year. So if you think about if he can have nursed that, that probably the, I'd say probably one of the worst Ferraris we've seen in a very, very, very long time, JT. I don't know if you'd agree. But... Yeah, to, to, to nurse that to, to fourth place in the World Championship is, is, is fantastic. Uh, Kimi, 36 years old, um, obviously had a great legacy in Formula 1. Now, what is he going to do after this World Champion? Now, this is very open to speculation. Is he going to go to NASCAR? Is he going to go back to rallying? Uh, but it is a, really exciting to see him on the track, JT. Now, obviously, he's not... Um, now, the funny thing is, uh, he obviously, I imagine he's a very, very nice guy, uh, Kimi Wright, and you know, to... To go out in, in 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 Finland and have a have a beer with him, have a Heineken, have yeah. some vodka, oh, whatever. Oh, yes. But um, yeah. he has this. He, he's always done this. He's always had this like almost like a, a very awkward, very verbal, or if you like, lack of verbal skills, I guess. Obviously, with his is very you know not really exp- responding very good uh, in, in press <laughs> interviews. He very very low key. Doesn't smile much. Uh, but that what well, that's what makes Kimmy. In uh, in McLaren, I think it was two thousand three. One of the the most famous uh, quote he ever said was when Martin Brundle interviewed him, and he said, uh, "Kimmy, Kimmy, you've missed the presentation by Pele." And then he went, "Are you going to get over it?" And then he responded to Martin Brundle. He just said, oh, "I was having a," and I won't say the last word, but I think you know what it what it is. And yeah, and then obviously more re- and more recently, uh, in in Abu Dhabi in twenty twelve, his 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 first win since his return. Uh, when Simon Rennie, uh, the race engineer, who's at Red Bull uh, at the moment, uh, said to him on the radio while he was saying, obviously, like, Lonzo was behind and look after the tyres, uh, he responded with two amazing ones where uh, he said, where, where Simon Rennie said, I'll keep you updated on the gap, I'll keep you updated on the gap, and he went, just leave me alone, I know what I'm doing. And then another one, which was an amazing one, when the safety car came out and he said, uh, Simon Rennie said, OK, Kim, you've got to warm up all four tyres, you've got to warm up all four tyres. And then he went, yes, yes, I know what I'm doing. You don't have to interrupt me every 10 seconds, I think it was. And then Simon Rennie just responds and goes, OK. So, <laughs> obviously, very, he is, he is an enjoyable guy. I mean, I have warmed up to him a lot more when I see him on the podium and I see him in press conferences. He, you know, I don't think he's a nasty driver. I don't think he's out there just to... You know, to give the press not what they want. You know, not 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 full, uh, complete uh, interviews. I just think he's, he's he's a funny driver to have in Formula One. Uh, so this was that was the current. Uh, that, that's this, this is the current uh, Formula One finish uh, world champion on the grid at the moment. Uh, and I'm gonna pass over to JT, who's gonna talk about the uh, two-time world champion from McLaren JT. Yeah, thank you very much, Alison. Yeah, very good to to Kimi Reitman. Obviously, <clears throat> F1 one lo- loves their finish drivers, but not not normally. As much as Mika Hakkinen, everybody loves Mika Hakkinen. I know, two time world champion, uh, pretty much a driver of the 90s, that's where he pretty much raced uh, from 1991 until he retired in 2001, so he had 10 years there. So, um, I'm going to quickly br- briefly go through the career um, and teams. He only, only joined two teams, which I didn't know if I'm honest, up, up until doing research. Uh, he drove for Lotus in 1991 to 1992, and then up until um, obviously 1993, where he joined McLaren. And then that's when he uh, left in 2001, which is a bit of a shock, I, I would think, at the time. You know, a driver like Mika Hakkinen, you know, leaving Formula 1. And obviously, he went off to do touring cars and DTM and all that, what F1 drivers normally did back then. Um, so, obviously, as we all know, obviously, we all know there's two World Championships, 1998, 1999. But battling close with uh, uh, Michael Schumacher, obviously, a massive rivalry then, wasn't it? You know what I mean? And all yeah, that. So, that was very exciting. Uh, he had 20 wins to his name, which is uh, very impressive. Uh, 51 podiums, uh, 420 career points. Uh, obviously, when he was racing, the win- wins were 10 points. Um, 26 uh, pole positions and 25 fastest laps. His first entry in Formula 1 was at the 1991 U- uh, US Grand Prix. His first win was at the 1997 European Grand Prix. Last win was at the 2001 United States Grand Prix. And his last entry in Formula 1, as classified, is the 2001 Japanese Grand Prix. So, as we all know, Mick Mika Hatton was named the flying fit, and as we all know, his results and his performances were absolutely exceptional, uh, especially, all, obviously, of the years, 1998 to 1999, where, he's, where he won his, uh, his two world championships, c- coming close to the Ferraris, and pretty much that was when, you know, I think Hatton should have went and maybe, you know, to get more 
championships out of them, you know what I mean? And obviously, coming in um, pretty much into Formula 1, uh, roughly at the time when Ayrton Senna was dying, that probably would have you know, put him off a little bit. Because well, at the time, he was still a bit, a bit of a new driver, he was still learning, you know, learning his feet. And maybe that would have like set Mika back a little bit, you know what I mean? So, maybe, if, if anything, it sort of pushed Mika on to do well, found, found the limits of his car, found how he wanted his car, and come 1998, it was absolutely exceptional. Uh, there isn't really that much to say um, about Mika Hackman, apart from before he joined Lotus in 1991, he did a, he did a drive with Bennett, who obviously dominated the, at the start of the 90s, didn't they? Obviously, with Michael Schumacher. Yeah. Um, uh, he, did, uh, he, did, he did a test with them, and uh, he said that he liked the throttle and how the car just made it accelerate, and how it just grasped at that speed. Uh, and obviously, unfortunately, he never, really, he never got a drive, and obviously, he signed with Lotus. But, um, I mean... So, I mean, say he did sign for Benetton. I mean, how many more championships could he could he have won? Mm. I mean, obviously he might have stayed with Benetton for, for all that, but I think he would have won um, definitely more than two. I think he should yeah. have won more than two. I think he should have stayed in Formula One a hell of a lot longer. Yeah, but, um, he should have. Yeah. But obviously, ever since uh, leaving Formula One, he's just become ambassador. But, um, the likes of Mercedes Benz, uh, Johnny Walker, it was there. Um, as I think, no, he's got four kids. Uh, Mika Hackman got four flying things so <laughs> I'm surprised I haven't really seen any another any, four um, in, exactly in Formula 1 so um, so yeah that's pretty much all there is to say about Kim Reichen and, uh, Kim Reichen mm-hmm. Mika Hakkinen sorry um, there isn't really that much there hasn't really I've just done a little bit of research into yeah. his life and there's not really that much to, to mm-hmm. say in his racing yeah. career he's just he did, he did Formula 1 and then yeah. he just went into touring cars and then that was pretty much it it was strange a bit because so, I, I mean yeah, yeah it's, it's not really something. I mean, you can just say, wait, 161 starts. I didn't, yeah. I didn't mention that in, in Formula One, but yeah, that's Kimmy. Um, not that can make it happen. <laughs> why? Why hey, do you want Kimmy so much? <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, we do it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Mika had a very, a very short career compared to what what he could have uh, have done. Obviously, if, if anyone's yeah. seen uh, McLaren's tune in 2013, their 50 years anniversary, uh, they say that Mick Hackenham was a like a what like a Superman, uh, and, and he, he had his own planet. But uh, anyway, so but he's a yeah. great driver, absolutely amazing. We're going to move on to uh, Kimi Raikkonen's uh, records that he holds in Formula One now, compared to Mika Hakkinen's uh, records, which is JT and non. Uh, I don't I don't think he has any. I've just yeah. I've just had a quick look at his um at the, at the records and mm. well, Kimi has quite a few. Um. In, in, in you know yeah moving obviously having a you know very successful career and getting a lot of uh, things there so let's start off with that he has 42 fastest laps which I stated which are the most in Formula 1 uh, no one has yet to, to beat that which is, is great um, you know there's other ways to, to say how good in Formula 1 you are than, than race wins and all that and, uh, fastest laps Kimi has that uh, in 2005 he had 10 fastest laps um, matching Michael Schumacher in 2004 so Michael obviously uh, 10 fastest laps in uh, 04, which was his last championship winning year. Uh, Kimi Raikkonen right matches that uh, 2005 um, with uh, McLaren. Uh, he has six consecutive fastest laps. He got them in Spain, Turkey, Monaco, Canada, France, and the British Grand Prix at Silverstone. Uh, in 2006, once Michael Schumacher had retired from Formula 1, he became the richest uh, Formula 1 driver with an amazing 51 million US dollars uh, per year. That was his salary. Uh, in uh, the 2007 Chinese Grand Prix, he scored, uh, f- he scored uh, Ferrari's 600th podium. And uh, in that time, it t- another uh, 100 since the 2016 Russian Grand Prix, which was the race that just happened. And that was uh, their 700th. So obviously, Kimi doing... Uh, fun, loads of work uh, for Ferrari. Um, he is uh, one of three. He is uh, the third Finnish driver to win his world championship uh, um, after Kiki Rosberg and Mick Hacken. Now, Kiki, remember, guys, he is German. He's Mick, he's uh, Nico's uh, dad, but he was yep. born in Finland. Yep. So remember that, guys. He's also the most successful Finnish Formula One driver in terms of points, podium finishes, fastest laps. And he shares the most wins with Mick Hackman. As I say, 20 wins for Mika and 20 wins for Kimi. Kimi holds a record for the most wins in a debut year with Ferrari, with six being Alain Prost's previous uh, record of five in 1990. Kimi Reitman achieved Lotus F1's first win at the 2012 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, as I say, which was uh, great for them, so they have at least a win to, to their names uh, scored by him. 
Kim Reitman holds the record for the most classified finishes in a single season. 20 out of 20 in 2012, which is a real achievement. Um, he holds the record for the most points finish in a single season. 19 of 20 in 2012. So again, very... You know, un- unlike obviously Michael Schumacher, who when he re- when he returned to Formula One, it wasn't you know he didn't achieve probably as much as he wanted to. Kimi Raikkonen really did and, and, and you know made his stand in Formula One. His return and was really good. 2012 with Lotus was a very exciting year. I was really you know, I was blown away by that. And then 13, especially by him winning the opening season and, and beating you know people like um, Vettel, obviously going after number four. Uh, you know, a very angry Alonso who obviously, you know, didn't get to win a third world championship in the in the previous race in Brazil last year. You know, he had Hamilton at Mercedes, Rosberg, you know, is he now the leader of Mercedes at, uh, after Michael's gone? So he beat a lot of people and that really was a shock. Um, that's probably, as I say, as I said, JT, that's one of my favourite races of the modern era. And oh, definitely yeah. a race that he'll remember because it's a, it's a bit like Miles Schumacher's podium in, in, in Valencia in 2012, you know, it, it, it maybe it wasn't maybe as special as what he's done in his previous in his career, but just to get that to to, to, to beat the adversity of, of where he is at the moment. Yeah. You know, he's an older driver. He's made his return. He's, you know, people might think he, he, he's all ringed out, but uh, yeah. So that was amazing by by him. He holds a record, a joint with Michael Schumacher for five fastest laps at the Melbourne Grand Prix circuit, um, the Australian Grand Prix, two thousand two, two thousand three, two thousand six, two thousand seven. And as I say, that is to his last win, most recent win, sorry, in Formula One, 2013 Australian Grand Prix. He holds the record for the most consecutive points finishes of 27, starting with the 2012 Bahrain Grand Prix and finishing with the 2013 Hungarian Grand Prix. Um, and last but not least, Reitman is the third Ferrari driver, along with uh, Juan Manuel Fangio and Jordi Schechter of South Africa to win his world title in the first year with the team. Now, that is amazing. Just imagine doing that, winning with Ferrari in your first season. So, he's one of three drivers, obviously, Impressive. along with Fangio, one of the, the most iconic... I mean, he, I see. We, we, I don't, we'll talk about him, obviously, more when we get to... when he's an F1 decoder, when he earns a position. He is an amazing driver. He sets... He is, but he wrote Formula 1, if you like. He was, a, a, he was really a pioneer of Formula 1. So that was Kimmy's stats, uh, his, uh, sorry, Kimmy's records, um, and JT's Mick Hakkinen doesn't have anything to, to contest with that, apart from sharing the wins, um, does yeah, he? Yeah, just, yeah, just sharing the wins with Kimmy Reitman, but I'm, I'm going to go in a little bit into his personal life, because I just I, I researched something there just, just recently, and this is quite interesting, because obviously, as we all know, loads of Formula drivers live in Monaco, obviously, you know, you know, your Hamilton's, your Rosberg's, and, and all that. Mick Hakkinen was one of them, obviously, you know, Brought his raised his kids up in Monaco and, and stuff like that. And on the on the eighth of May two thousand eight, right, he had a he had a brand new mansion uh, completed in um, France, Monaco, and um, in his trophy cabinet where he keep where he kept all his personal trophies. One of the one of the uh, wires that controlled the lights got a bit of a had a bit of a short circuit and it tripped and actually set fire to his to his house. Mm. Really pretty oh. much, and actually burnt all his trophies down. So. Oh. He's got none. <laughs> oh no, no, no! So, oh, who will make that? Oh my! <laughs> oh, golly! I'm, I'm sorry. Um, oh, yeah, that's. <laughs> do you know I'm what? Do you know? Do you know what, Mika? Do you know what? We've given the driver of the day award uh, to Kimmy. I tell you yep. what. Uh, ring him up. I'm sure you've got his number. <laughs> ring him up and tell <laughs> him to go and put that in your house, your mansion. Oh. We'll have, to, we'll have to like ring up the, the football. I mean the F1 trophy. <laughs> The, the cabinet place to get us another one, but the, I don't, actually I don't think they'll do. Them. I really want to give it a kit to make it now. Oh, eh? I really <laughs> want to give it. Oh, now I can't, can't give it away to Mick. I can't give, can't give, can't give that for free. Doesn't matter if his trophies are burnt or not. It's oh. all fault. Oh, that is really sad. That is really sad. My condolences, Mika, um, from 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 from, from uh, me and JT at the F1 debate show. We. Oh, Sorry, guys. That is incredibly sad. Very, very sad. Um, Mika. But let, let, let's, end on, let's end this episode on a bit of a positive because Hagenden does enjoy a bit of skiing, a bit of swimming, a bit of tennis, scuba diving, and jet skiing. Oh, yes. There's also his favourite music artist, or like some Phil Collins, Michael Jackson, <laughs> and the one and only. And I'm going again. Uh, Frank Sinatra. Oh, I was going to say. Let's the one and only Frank Sinatra. Um, 
Actually, uh, I remember a few weeks ago, uh, JT uh, told me a very interesting fact about Michael Schum- uh, so- Sorry, Sebastian Vettel. Uh, he also mentioned it in the F1 Decoded episode 2, which was Vettel and Schumacher. Please, uh, watch, please uh, watch that if you haven't already. Uh, Vettel's three um, people that he looked up with were three. Michael's. Michael Jordan, Michael Schumacher, and the singer Michael Jordan. Coming out next Friday. Now... As we mentioned yesterday in the F1 debate show, we do apologise uh, that this is coming out. That, that this came out on a Thursday, um, but don't worry. The next one, so episode four, and then moving forward will be on Friday. So please catch uh, that. Also, as well, guys, if you enjoy the F1, if you enjoy F1 Decoded, please tell us in the comment section down below. We we are 100% here for you guys. We're 100% here for our fans. Just tell us anything you say, anything positive anything negative, anything we can improve on, we will give you a dimension, possibly. We'll, we'll see what we feel like, but uh, obviously any any advice you have, guys, is really... Yeah, is, yeah. Is, is, and, and thank you to, to, to the two guys who commented on our, I think it was our Roland Rattenberger tribute, I believe, or it might be now, uh, it was our Roland Rattenberger tribute. Yeah. We, got, we got two interactions. One of us said that uh, that uh, Jules Villeneuve uh, wasn't the last F1 driver to die in Formula 1, so yeah. we got it wrong, so it was like... <sighs> Oh, Dave, we need to do our yeah. research. We love them. And um, and the other one was like, "Are you guys from New Zealand?" New Zealand. Um, New Zealand. But oh, you obviously, mean so New thank Zealand. thank you to the the fan obviously who told us about that. We do try to get our facts right, but obviously at the end of the day, uh, guys, we yeah. are just two, yeah. you know, idiots if you like. Um, so you know, we're not going to get everything right, but obviously we will do. Don't worry, we're not we're not going to give you. No, a, we, we try. We we try. But obviously, there are yeah. times where we, we will might get a stat wrong or two. So yeah, obviously. Yeah. Those who mentioned it, thank you very much. Yes, yeah, you, you are helping us. We're growing. We have been exactly. going for about uh, six, six slash seven weeks, something like that. Now, obviously, we started on Facebook and moved over to YouTube. So it's about seven weeks we've been running. Um, I think we've really we've progressed quite a lot. Do you like how we've? How, do you like our progression? Um, yeah. You know what? You know just anything, anything you can tell us, guys. We get lonely. Just leave your comments down <laughs> below, please. Um, so thank you very much for watching this. Um, please join us next week for our uh, Spanish uh, our Spanish Grand Prix preview, F1 debate show episode 11, uh, and also the race on uh, Sunday. And more importantly, F1 Decode episode 4, which is coming out next Friday, Hill v Mansell, the Battle of the Brits, so please catch that. So from myself and JT, goodbye uh, for this episode, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys. See you later, guys. See you later, guys. Take care. Bye.